Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome indeed. So why do we still use the BMI formula? What is the BMI formula? When was the BMI formula invented? Who invented the BMI formula? Was it a doctor or was it a nutritionist? These are all questions that we'll answer, I will answer in the presentation when I put forward the case to prove that the BMI formula is archaic and outdated. Now it's easy to throw shade on something that was invented a long time ago. So I'm also, I'm also gonna go through quite a few alternatives that we can now use in the modern era to work out whether or not we are at a healthy weight. Well, that's enough waffling from me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what I think the BMI formula is archaic and needs to be ignored. So as I have mentioned many times during my updates, although I mention my BMI score, I don't really hold much confidence in it whatsoever. And neither does this guy from the Get Fit Over 40 channel. So what does it actually determine? It determines body fat percentage, uh, visceral fat, so how much uh, fat is around your organs and things like that, body age, how old are you really, not you know, what is your actual age in years, but how old is your physical body? Uh, BMI, body mass index, I hate that because that really has nothing to do with health. Skeletal muscle. Now there's a link in the description below to that full video. So why don't I believe it's a legitimate test? Let's go through the facts. And I know it's easy to throw shade on something. So what I'm also going to do is look at the viable alternatives to BMI also is the BMI formula. Well, the formula is weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. And that formula will then give you, as an individual, a score. So, what does your score actually mean? Well, the BMI score puts you into a category. And these categories range from underweight, which is on the left, to morbidly obese, which is on the right. And we'll discover in the rest of the presentation the other factors that should or could affect this score, but in the BMI formula are completely ignored. So who actually devised the body mass index assessment? It was a gentleman named Lambert Quintelet. So was he a doctor? Was he a dietitian? Or was he a nutritionist? Well, he was none of these. He was actually a Belgian astronomer, mathematician and a sociologist. And he devised the BMI formula between 1830 and 1850. So out of interest, let's look at a few other inventions from the era of 1830 to 1850 that have since been improved on. So the first mechanical calculator was made in 1835 and nearly all of us now carry a far more powerful calculator in our pocket every day. The first mechanical reaper for grain was invented in 1831, and we now have far more modern combine harvesters. The first velocipede, or as we now know it, the bicycle, was invented in 1839, and we now have bicycles that can go faster than the first automobile. But for many people, including a great many who comment regularly on the channel, BMI is still the go-to method for telling whether or not you are overweight or obese. So what is the fundamental flaw with the BMI formula? Well, the first element is fat versus muscle mass. The body mass index's biggest flaw is that it does not take into account a person's body fat versus their muscle mass. It just takes their overall weight. That's like selling a gold and diamond ring and basing the price on one factor, the combined weight. There should be a price for the gold and there should be a price for the diamond. And in the same way with BMI, there should be a price or score for fat and there should be a score for muscle. Muscle also weighs more than fat. It is denser. A cubic inch of muscle weighs more than a cubic inch of fat. Therefore, BMI will inevitably class people with high muscle mass as fatter, which is incorrect. Let's take a look at this example. A six foot tall sprinter 
weighing 90 kilograms, which is around 200 pounds, may have the same BMI as a couch potato, which is a BMI of 26. And that couch potato will be the same height and weight as the sprinter. A BMI calculation would class both of them as being overweight. Also, BMI does not take into account the actual distribution of fat around the body. And not all fat is created equal. Abdominal fat negatively affects the organs like the kidneys and the heart more severely than fat which accumulates around the backside or the face. The circumference of your waist gives a better indication of the more problematic fat levels that you may have. And this fact may not have been fully understood in 1830 or 1850 when the BMI index was invented. Let's take a look at height versus weight as a formula. If the six foot tall sprinter's waist circumference is 34 inches, it's well within healthy weight. That's if his height is 72 inches because his waist is less than half of his height. However, a six foot tall sedentary person's waist of 40 inches is more than half their height. For a person with a 40 inch waist to be within limits, he or she would need to be 80 inches tall and that's six foot six inches. This method of measurement is much simpler than BMI and in my humble opinion is far more accurate. So let's take a look at some examples of overweight people when we only use the BMI formula. First of all we've got Sonny Bill Williams who is an all black rugby player. He has a BMI of 29. According to the BMI scale, this gentleman is overweight. Russell Wilson of the Seattle Seahawks, he has a BMI of 30. Technically, according to the BMI scale, he is obese. Now, would you like to tell either of these gentlemen that they're either overweight or obese? I certainly would not. I would be interested in hearing from anyone who's got a high BMI score, who's classed as either overweight or obese, but whose waist is less than half of their height. Now there are many BMI calculators on the internet and there are apps for mobile phones too. And I've put a link to the standard BMI calculator in the description below if you wish to use it. So let's take a look at some more anomalies with regard to the BMI formula. There is only one formula. Weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. And you can see it's in the heading to this slide. So what is a formula? Well, you can see here the definition of formula. Um, and if we apply it to a modern day example, to convert kilograms into pounds, the formula is to multiply by 2.2. So five kilograms is 11 pounds. And that's the same all over the world. But there are international variations to the original BMI formula. Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore and the USA use a different system because they see that the BMI formula is actually flawed. So it's not a formula, it's a guess. And I'm guessing that when it was put forward by Lambert Quintelet, it was good enough for the time, as was the mechanical calculator and the mechanical reaper. But times have changed. People's lifestyles and body compositions have also changed. BMI as a formula has just not kept up. Our mobile phones now have over 100,000 times more processing power of the computer that landed the man on the moon, but we still use a non-scientific formula introduced over 170 years ago to say whether or not we are overweight. And by that I mean saying to someone, you are fat. But if BMI isn't any good, we need to look at some alternatives. It's easy to criticize, but you must always give an alternative. So the first one we can look at is the Body Adiposity Index, or BAI. It's unlike BMI, as it does not use your weight in the calculation. In order to work out your percentage body fat, BAI multiplies your hip circumference by your height. Like BMI, this does give you a score. However, it is measured against male versus female, and age is also taken into account. Although clinical studies have not shown any proof, it is widely believed that the body adiposity index is more accurate than BMI. BAI is useful in areas 
weighing scales may not be available. There is a BAI link in the description below if you'd like to use it. Let's move on to another alternative. One of the most effective alternatives to BMI is the good old fashioned measuring tape. By measuring your waist, you can get a good indication of the amount of abdominal fat that you are carrying. Knowing the circumference of your waist can help you determine your risk of getting heart disease and other medical conditions. According to physicians, the following figures indicate individuals who are in the at-risk group. Men who have a waist circumference of 40 inches and over, and for women, a waist circumference of over 35 inches or over. And all you need to do to do this test is to just measure your waist. Moving on, let's take a look at the waist to hip ratio calculator method. Uh, not only an excellent way of calculating how much excess weight you are carrying, it can also be used to indicate susceptibility to a number of health issues, including high blood pressure, heart disease and diabetes. The formula for this is waist measurement divided by hip measurement. For example, a person with a 28 inch waist and 35 inch hips has a hip to waist ratio of 0 0.8. The World Health Organization states that abdominal obesity is defined as a weight to hip ratio of, for men, above 0 0.90 and for females or ladies above 0 0.85. There is a waist to hip ratio calculator in the description below if you'd like to use it. The last alternative we're going to look at is waist to height ratio. This is an amazingly simple formula to calculate. Uh, it's your waist measurement should be less than half of your height. And we've already discussed this briefly. So if you're six foot tall, your waist should be 36 inches or smaller. Uh, and that's obviously the same for centimetres. Uh, all you need to conduct this assessment is a measuring tape. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, I hope you see now why I don't put much stock in BMI as the only metric to work out whether or not I am either overweight or obese or actually okay. Uh, and I know of many doctors um, and organisations that still use BMI and BMI alone as a marker as to whether someone is um, overweight or in need of medical attention. Um, looking at the presentation, I've got a couple of questions for you because I'd like to gather some more data because I'm all about gathering the data. Um, yes or no, are you happy with relying on just one method of working out whether or not you're at a healthy weight, uh, albeit one that was invented between uh, 1830 and 1850? Yes or no to whether or not BMI should be the sole way of working out whether or not you are at a healthy weight. Also, um, have a look at some of the alternatives and try them out. Not all of them, you can if you want. Maybe one, maybe two of the alternatives. Um, and then compare the score you get from the alternatives to that of BMI. And I'd be interested to see if someone comes out as technically overweight or obese with BMI, but when they use one of the other alternatives, they come out as um, being in the normal range or not requiring any particular kind of attention. Uh, well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It did take me quite a long time to do it, and I've been promising to post this for a while. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.